All right, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing some Historic Brawl while we wait for the banned announcements to come in for Standard and possibly Historic. I actually don't know if they're banning multiple formats, but Standard definitely. Anyway, uh, we're going to be playing some Historic Brawl today, and we're going to be showcasing some highlights from the Twitch stream where we did play some pretty sweet decks, in fact. Uh, today's list uh, should give you an indication of what I felt it was. Um based on my initial build just by the name that i gave it this is the raging meme um <laughs> built around uh Carrix or charix i don't know the raging isle four mana zero seventeen spells your opponent's cast that target Carrix. the raging isle Carrix sounds better right we'll go with Carrix. i'm gonna call it charix throughout the entire video so Prepare to have your ears be hurt. Uh, three mana, you can activate it to make it get plus X minus X until the end of the turn, where X is the number of islands you control. A super sweet commander. And the one that I actually looked at this and decided I want to go into big blue. So similar to like the big red archetype, which is, you know, uh, a style of play which is not usually reds way of playing. We're going to be doing the same thing with blue. We're actually going to be trying to ramp up and make some big sea creatures. That was my initial idea anyway going into the list. So if we type uh, the creatures, we'll show you what I really mean. So right at the very top end, we've got lots and lots of six and seven drops like Serpent of the Yawning Depths, a serpent that can't be blocked except for by Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses and Serpents. We've got a big serpent with Hexproof. We got Nezzy, the Primal Tide, 7 mana, 7-7 seven, seven draws as cards based off of our opponent casting non-creatures, and we can also discard 3 to take it out of the battlefield to save it from Born Wipes. And then we've got your boy, Slinvoda, and this should say all it needs to say about what I thought about this deck when I originally built it. Uh, a big boy, 8 mana for an 8-8. Eight, eight. If you pay it for 10 mana as a 10 mana 8-8, eight, eight, then it actually bounces your opponent's board. Which is really not worth it, but <laughs> Slinverda it is. So yeah, I ended up building a big blue, and it was going to be built around a sea monster kind of theme. Seeing as though the Carrix Raging Isle is a Leviathan crab, it just seemed on theme. So I went for a kind of a, fla a flavor-based deck. Um, as I found out, though, uh, it turned out that it was a little bit harder to build just a big sea monsters list because we don't quite have all the ramp that I would have really liked. We've got a uh, Firemind's Vessel, we got the Heraldic Banner, Chromatic Lantern, Arcane Signet, Mind Stone, and Treasure Map as well. Treasure Map, uh, after it gets three landmark counters on it, turns into a land and creates three treasures, so pretty decent ramp. Um, oh, and Midnight Clock as well. Auto include for blue decks. Um, I realized that this probably wasn't going to get us very well, uh, very far, so I needed to keep some tempo in the early game, and that's basically where this deck ends up being good. Um, so we're using board wipes like Whelming Wave, which returns all creatures to their owner's hands except for Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents, which is the vast majority of our deck uh, should fall into one of those creature types. Uh, we also have Flood of Tears and River's Rebuke. River's Rebuke being a uh, one-sided all-permanence board wipe, which is pretty cool. Or oh, non-land permanent, I guess. And Flood of Tears being a uh, synchronous one, so if we've got four permanents in play, we can put one back into play, something like a big shark typhoon who creates sharks, sea monster theme and all that. Gonna stick to that. But yes, it ended up being like blue tempo with a big finish. So we do have lots of bouncing with things like Blink of an Eye, things like... Brazen Borrower. We have counters like the Juari's Disruption, countering Lesser Pay 1, uh, Disdainful Strokes, Tails Ends, uh, things of that nature, just to make sure that our opponents uh, can't get too far ahead while we're building up into our big sea monster. And if the board is clear, we can just keep hitting with Carex as well, hopefully making this a big boy that does some good stuff. But yeah, um, that's all I'm really going to go into with the deck. It's it's going to explain itself as we play it, most of all, and should mention as well, I do make a couple of really painful punts, uh, one of them being kind of, I don't know, I thought I'd already lost, so, you know, I had to play to an out I didn't need to play out to, it was one of those kind of things, um, but yeah, be gentle in the comments, other than that though, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, without further ado, let's get to it. 
This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below, or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. So what is Bam playing? Ooh, Muldrotha. That's a commander worth revisiting, I imagine. Whole lot of stuff in there. Yeah, this looks fine on the play. I'll take this hand. Uh, I kind of feel like we throw this out to lead off with. By the way, chat, you may notice once I click the button and actually do the thing I'm supposed to do, I'll forget this a lot of the time. Cardboard Live! We now have it on the channel so you should start getting like pop-ups if you're on uh, pc i don't know if it works on mobile if you're on pc you get pop-ups of all the cards that i'm playing so you should be able to read them all without me having to tell you what they are which means i don't need my deck tracker at the left for you guys well not as in, in its entirety anyway all right, so opponent is playing Muldrotha, the Grave Tide. Six mana, six, six during each of your turns. There's a Binding of the Titans. I think we counter that. I think we just take our opportunity to get that Dwari Disruption done while we still can. Let's get a Chromatic Lantern down as well. But yeah, Muldrotha, during each of your turns, you may play a land. And cast a permanent of each permanent type from your graveyard, so. Permanent tribal. Ooh, Brontodon. That's annoying. Well, let's make sure to get our lantern used just in case Brontodon wants to have a piece of it. And we'll drop down our island. The trusty deck tracker that always works 100% of the time. It does very rarely bug out. From uh, what I've noticed. Ouch. That's rough. My 0, 17. Uh, fine. It's a 6 mana 0, 17 now. Okay. Gonna go after the lantern to keep me away from my raging isle. It's probably for the best. And yeah, let's just pass. Can hold open a number of things here. Bam doesn't need to know what I'm holding up. Only that it's spooky and you should worry about it. That's a prime speak of Vanifar. I'm going to bounce that. Seems like a decent tempo swing to me. Dig for that island. Nice. Hmm. Sorcery, sorcery. So I guess we could go with Cherix. It does leave us susceptible to our opponent playing their Muldrotha, but I think that's okay. They haven't got a land in there just yet. Hey, Andre. How's it going? Ravenous Tube. Rip. My big boys. You leave them alone. Sea blue, I expect Talrand. Talrand might have been okay. He wasn't enough of a sea creature for me, though. I don't know how he'd uh, necessarily work with most of my like mass removal being things like this as well, since he makes drakes. I don't know. Uh, let's name blue. Hmm. I guess we uh, we just pass here. Could use this to do this thing right here. Don't know if it's necessarily the case when we could use it to do this thing right here instead. Could be cute. He's a sky summoner, actually, Andre. And I've got his artwork at the other side of my room right now. Talran Sky Summoner. Alright, uh, well, let's get a Castle Vantress going. 
Don't know what we actually want. Midnight clock's okay. Yeah, I don't think we need the land necessarily, though, if we're going to drop down a rock. So, let's drop down said rock. I think we actually are going to do this now. Vizier becomes a copy of Choop. Choop kills Vanifar. Yay. Oh, I think he's a merfolk. I think he's a merfolk wizard? I actually don't know. He cares about instants and sorceries, so it's probably a wizard. I don't know. I always see merfolk more as river folk than, like sea creatures when it comes to like sea creatures it's usually like octopus crabs things like that um let's say no to that cavalier of knights that's very rude gonna kill my vizier Fair. That's totally fair. Ooh, an octopus. Um, so they're holding off playing their Muldrotha, I'm assuming while I've got potential to have counter magic, but also until they can actually do something. At the moment, they've only really got Binding of Titans, I think, next turn, if they've got a land drop. I think I'm just going to play my my big boy. He's a 117 thanks to the heraldic banner. Powerful 117. Oh, don't you know it. Can actually swing for 5 though. Just think about that. And the fun part about it is as well, I don't actually have enough islands to accidentally kill Charix. Just on the activation alone. I think I've got like 15 islands in this deck. I could definitely uh, activate it too many times. Alright, let's see what you got. You leave Charix alone. You leave my meme alone. <laughs> Could turn it into a into a two two, and then activate it. That's probably one way to kill it. <laughs> Seems not ideal. I'm guessing they've got removal, and they're wondering whether or not to actually use it. Yeah, Spark Harvest kills Charix. Gets back Brontodon to kill Midnight Clock, presumably. And eh, we'll send you back to the command zone. We're almost at, like, big mana card playables right here. We'll see if we can get there. If we can get, like, our big leviathans. Could be a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to go with the Arcane Signet. Ooh, how does this work? It probably works in the way I think it does. Let's make it a creature, and then let's swing, mutate the Crawling Barons over, so it's a 2-2 base power and toughness, draws me a card. Yes! Alright, it's still a land, I think. Yeah, it can add colorless and activate itself as well, so I can grow my Sea Dasher Octopus. Although, they've got a uh, Playcrafter right here, so sad times ahead. I'm assuming that's where they're going with that. Just keep playing Playcrafter, it can pretty much just lock me out this game. Hmm. I guess, actually, I could do...
Im bomb. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make Vizier a copy of Muldrotha. Then I can play... I was gonna say, I could play this... I imagine I can only play it on the back side. I can play a creature to play around the Plague Crafter. I can do an artifact as well. So let's get the Midnight Clock back. And then the Sea Dasher. Boom. Okay, so we have Plague Crafter Protection. See if that actually does anything for us. You're an elemental, right? You're a zombie... Oh, well, yeah, zombie elemental avatar. Okay, so you will be uh, bounced with, with this. Assassin's Trophy. It's rude. Get an island. Hmm. And then Binding of Titans to fill up the graveyards. It's a Phyrexian <laughs> Obliterator. Put lands and illumination into my yard. It's probably actually benefiting me there. Land drop for the turn, and they've still got creature, so they can play the Phyrexian Obliterator. <laughs> hmm. I think we set them back as much as possible with this, right? It's mana efficient. I think we got the mana efficient play. Yeah, let's do that. Bounce all your stuff. So it takes four black mana to get that obliterate back, so that's kind of a, a big deal in itself. Swing draw cards. An octopus. Why the hell not? <laughs> Let's get that out there. An actual fun format. Why am I playing this instead of standard? I actually... Except for... Except for, specifically, the Omnath matchups. I actually really like standard. I'm gonna put that out there. Land drop, and got creature left, so it's just Playcrafter, Brontodon, Choop. It's actually quite a lot of options in there. Binding of the Titans. Gonna be a couple more. Mill three. Oh no, hit one of my big ones. My Nezahal. Dang it. It's my biggest of the sea creatures. They got a massacre worm in here. Good lord. Bounce. Hmm. This is only creature or planeswalker, yeah. Okay. Give me some decent. That's that's not decent. That's indecent. Okay. So let's swing for six. Trying to play a tempo game here, so let's do his best to do that. That's a card. That plays around. Not enough. <laughs> uh, there's a massacre worm in that yard. I guess there's a while before we get there, though. I can actually do Brazen Borrower. Bounce the Borrower. That'll make me draw a card. And then I could bounce the Great Henge. That's not going to do me much, is it? It's only three mana Henge off of the Muldrotha, which is six. Mm. It leaves them with not a great deal of mana, but... It's not going to do me too much good. 
I guess we just hold open all of this. Give me something good. That's great. That's fantastic. Oh, baby, the game's over. Exile up to two guards. I don't believe we've got any reanimation. The only interaction with our graveyard is midnight clock, I think. Surprise Zero doesn't have trample. If it did, I think it would have been banned by now. I think it's getting banned on Monday. I think it's there's too much of a a vocalization on uh, the pure hatred of that card that they can't really ignore it anymore. It's been out long enough as well. Didn't they nuke the clock with Brontodon? How did I get back? I made a copy of Muldrotha with my Vizier, and then I played it from the graveyard. I also got my Crawling Barons back, which used to be a mutated Sea Dasher Octopus as well. So I pretty much rebuilt after after the devastation of their earlier turn, which is nice. It actually bodes well for this deck. Alright, there's Muldrotha. Two mana remaining. Hmm. Stitcher's Supplier. Yes. I think we're going to have to use this as a bit of a tempo swing. Which keeps... Oh, actually, hang on. Oh, no. Why is a squid not an octopus? What on earth is wrong with this game? <laughs> Get it together, wizards. That's a problem. You got an octopus and a squid. How dare you? If dogs and hounds could have been different for a long time, why can't we just join octopus and squid together? I'm angry. I'm so upset. Well, it doesn't matter because it's dead anyway. Hmm. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. Oh, they've even got Phyrexian Tower. That's so good with Muldrotha. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'm just bouncing the Great Henge. Playing the Brazen Borrower. Hmm. So I do need to set them back. I could do this, but it would bounce my Baron and Brazen Borrower. But I would get to draw a card. I think there's more... <sighs> yeah, I probably have to do this, actually. So if I do this, I'm going to get my Baron and Brazen Borrower back anyway, so I can reuse them and annoy further. I can't allow Muldrotha to play Massacre Worm out the yard, essentially. So it has to be bounced at some point. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. From there, I think we swing first. See what we can get. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's pretty annoying. <laughs> okay. So I think we just make mana here. We probably just Baron back the Sea Dasher. So we draw a card. And then pass. 
This game is definitely getting away from us, but I kind of feel like we're also keeping up to a certain extent. I think it's just eventually not going to be good enough. Octopuses live in dens on the seafloor while squids live on the open oceans. Octopuses use their eight sucker-lined arms to capture their prey and move about the ocean floor. Squids have eight arms lined with suckers, two specialized tentacles that they use to reach out and capture prey. The more you know. Hmm. Still, though, I think they're still similar enough. <laughs> still similar enough that they should, uh... Oh, God. Guardian Project. Hmm. Yeah. Enjoy that. My Baron! Could make them discard, but they've just drawn, so it really doesn't make too much difference. Just as long as I'm tying up their mana on consistently. Is this even winnable? Probably not. Probably not, but I'm going to play it out. I'm just more curious to see how far I can go with this. Before it's like well and truly over, no hope whatsoever. See, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Enclave. I mean, it only takes like one turn, I guess, of uh, Charix being alive for me to just kind of wreck their face. I don't know if the Charix play is the one here, though. It wouldn't be the worst. But I kind of feel like I should probably do something like this first. Try for better cards. Still a 6-5 after all. Ooh. Uh, five mana remaining. Let's... Let's pass. Snoop did a song with Ollie Mers. Yes, kind of. There's not much uh, Snoop dogging going on in here. I think it's mostly just like, you dig? I think that's pretty much all he does. <laughs> Mending of Dominaria, sure. It's quite the banger though. Won't my, I won't lie about that. What do we do about obliter obliterator other than counter it? We bounce it and generally irritate from start to finish. Uh, yes, this is fine. Takes care of the midnight clock, I don't really care. Okay. Hmm. Did I hear about the Ariana Grande Slayer collaboration? I haven't. Have you heard the Slipknot uh, Britney Spears cover, though? That's a pretty good one. Murderous Rider. Here we go. So this is what we were waiting for. Counter that. Bounce. Make a token of a creature. Draw a card. So, return your Chromatic Lantern, copy the Cavalier, draw a card. So now they have to float that mana and do something with it on their turn, otherwise they lose it and we've got ourselves 12 points in the air. With a double draw on the Nadia Kraken. 
Uh, we might have just won. <laughs> just put those back. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, that might be all it takes, chat. So let's uh, mutate this tentacle and make it a 4 3. Bounce the reclamation sage. Oh my god, we actually won. That's filthy. <laughs> I guess it is winnable. I thought it could be. I didn't think it was going to be. But... That is some tempo. That's kind of what we were doing. I When I originally built the list, I assumed it was blue ramp. But then I ended up like running out of ramp spells, so I was like, well, we've got to... If we're going to dirtle, we're going to have to play some tempo game, and I guess I put in enough tempo. <laughs> that just happened. Yeah, this deck's sweet. I love this thing. Ooh, hello. This is, uh, unkeepable. <laughs> yeah, I'll call this unkeepable. Anyone doing the list? I think I will do the list. Just make sure that you make it very clear that that you want to be on it. I'm going to keep this one. There's, there are cards in it. It's playable. Best present I ever got. Ooh. That's a hard question to answer. I'm trying to think now. I think there was one Christmas. It's kind of a little bit of a a bad answer. <laughs> there was one Christmas where I had just basically asked for money to get a, a new PC, essentially. So the PC I'm using now is technically part of a Christmas present, I would say. I was going to get it eventually, but kind of the Christmas money sped that process up, I guess. <laughs> Sub from Andre. Also that. Can't deny. It's pretty nice. It's only artifacts. Okay. Uh, I think we just pass here. <laughs> Lanawar Elves. Totally fine. Then we're cycling this. Boo hiss. And no two drop from them. Oh boy. Gotta check on this one. I've never really used this card. Eh, some pretty good modal uses on there. Some good stuff. For sure. I kind of feel like we just tempo them. With the inscription. So, return two target creatures to their hand. It's pretty much their entire turn next turn to replay it all, and then we can just make another land drop. Mm-mm. Hmm. I guess other standout Christmas presents, I guess one of them is I went through a phase where I thought I wanted to play guitar. Uh, I, I didn't really, as it turns out. Um, but it was one of those where I figured, oh, if I get this, this really, really cool guitar, I'll want to play more, which was not the case. If you guys want to look up a Minoric Medusa... A Minoric Medusa. I got one of them. I ended up selling it, though, not too long after that. Are you counting that primarily as a land in the deck when working out your land count, or is it a card that can be an emergency land when it needs to be? First I've ever heard of the card. So, essentially, the way that you should think about these modal lands, as a bare minimum, is that they are counted as half a land. So if they work in your deck, absolutely by all means put them in your deck, but only take out 
a land for each two modal cards that you put into your deck, essentially. So I can afford to run these cards because they're pretty decent and they actually work well. Uh, like the Glass Pool Mimic has plenty of targets in my deck, Mesmerizing Benthid being one of them, and the 8-8 eight, eight tokens that I'll be producing. Things of that nature are all definitely available to me. I wouldn't really run them on in any way, shape, or form unless they have some sort of actual like payoff for you for the most part. You shouldn't just shove them in your deck is basically what I'm putting. What I'm mentioning. Uh, let's go with our Charix here, I guess. Two modal lands to one basic. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, let's pass. <laughs> Nissa of Shattered Bows, and this is why we tempoed them early, so that we could get that disruption on a big card later. And that should... Quite... Pain Duffel Saw. So now we get our first Charix hit in. Currently swinging for 10. It's actually not 10, it's a lot more than that actually. <laughs> So it's a three activation. Could go again. I mean, it's a lot of damage. I think we're going for it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Alright, they're at five. Am I doing anything spoopy for October? I don't know. We've been playing horror games on the channel quite recently, so it's kind of like not much of a, a difference in style, <laughs> I would say, for... Uh, for the channel. I'm actually not doing any, like, specific things, I guess, for, uh... Ooh, nice. For October, as in, like, Halloween parties or anything like that. It's not really the... the time for it, I guess. Do a face cam, that'd be terrifying. Oh, I know. Uh, it's not quite what I wanted. But... I guess beggars can't be choosers, because we might have lethal here? Unless they've got some sort of answer with the swamp here for removal. Or counter magic and then they are in a little bit of trouble. Swing swing. Cherix. 6-11. Oh my god, we're 2-0. <laughs> oh my god. I thought this deck was a meme. The mana screw was real. Yeah, I kind of caught onto it though and took advantage, so I apologize, Dufflesaw. By all means, we can have another rematch if you would like. Always offer a rematch to any mana screwed individual. Okay, so this is a three lander. Seems pretty decent, to be honest. Alright, well, now we don't need to use this, so we can hold this for a later down the line kind of effect. Could be pretty decent. Alright, this is another set them back kind of situation. Shrimp not dead yet? No, they're doing fine. They're doing great, in fact. They're having a whale of a time. Okay, so this is where things can get pretty awkward because this can get mutated from the graveyard forever, so everything is a 6-6 a six, six, essentially. I think I just have to pass with my Brazen Borrower. Ooh, tap land. <laughs> hey, Kamas. Uh, this is an awful, awful card. I think I gotta let it resolve. Hey, Frostcake. Alright, 
So let's... I'm the one who's wrong? Excuse me? All right, time to pay three. For no reason whatsoever. No reason whatsoever. Seems like not starting off with the modal lands now hurting you. It's a weird one for sure. Good disdainful stroke there, I think. Tails End's always got a use, well, as long as our opponent has a commander. Ooh, that's pretty good. The missing of the land drop, though. Not so good. In fact, it would be amazing to have a land drop at this point. But... I digress. It's game for three. Let's pass the turn, start growing the ominous seas. That can do some fighting. Say no. Chilling vibe. For now. <laughs> There's no telling where this playlist can take us. It's a wild ride from start to finish. Hmm. I think we pass. Thought I couldn't use my personal playlist anymore. I can't. Um, technically. But, I don't know. I feel like on longer streams, I'll just throw out my normal playlist. On shorter ones, we'll use the... The royalty free stuff. There's an X4. I don't like that. But yeah, technically I can get into trouble for... Bounce. Copy. Draw. I can get into trouble for doing what I'm doing, but... I mean, it seems like most of Twitch has kind of decided that it's... It's fine. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm just going to join the herd on that one. Huh. So I can make a, a Super Borrower team. That does sound very interesting. Hmm. They can't ban all of you without destroying their own website. For sure. It's not technically Twitch that's doing the banning, though. Um, it is, but... It's... It's hard to... It's hard to describe, really. It's mostly the music owners are forcing them legally to deal with it. As much as they may not want to. So this is 3-6. You can do some fighting. Flyer squad. Get on in there. But yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be deleting the vod after uh, after the stream, so there's uh, there's nobody to chase me up about being naughty with my music. And I always uh, I always record all the streams as well, and I've got uh, the music on a separate audio line. So anything that I do in the stream, if I do like it and want to put it on the channel, it's dead easy to remove it. That's a card. That's not a card. Hmm. 
So I think we swing. Isn't officially enough cards for decision paralysis? Yeah, for sure. I did get to a point when I was building this deck where I was like, all right, it's time to, it's time to decide it's okay. <laughs> Okay. There's the Great Henge. That's going to gain them some life. Could swing the tempo in their favor. All on its own. Ooh, Hydra's growth. It's pretty filthy. It's going to make Hydra Crisis a big deal. You know, I'd really hate Maelstrom Pulse. That would be pretty rough. Mutating Brokos onto Hydroid Krasis makes it a 15 15. That's filthy. No fling in Sultai colors, though. Hmm. And skipping combat. Back to block. Probably means removal from our opponent. So let's get a brand new seven. Ah. Hmm. Not all that great. One, two, three. Yeah, Brokos is a is a big deal. I think we need to cycle the desert. In hopes of a better card. That's so good. That's such a good card. Yeah, I think we're dead. I think Brokos gets nine counters next turn and then tramples the living crap out of us. Let's just play Gadwick. Lethal in the air though. I mean, if they have removal, I guess I should have actually swung. If they had removal, I guess. I'm assuming that they did, because they held back to block. They would have just swung out and just gone, yeah, fair enough, wouldn't they? Surely. In that situation. I should have tested them about it though. You're probably right. Yeah, it was a punt. But I'm not dead. All right. Uh, 24, 23, 22, 21. We're up one. See if we can tend them. Certainly possible. So I need to play three blue spells to tap them down. I can do that, right? Three, six. Yeah, maybe not. Could do banner to get plus one plus oh, and there's eight points on Gadwick and the and the fairy. No, I don't think I can do it. 
Yeah, I should have swung out for sure. That's a feels bad moment. It was more of an admission of defeat, I would say. Then a punt, but I should have played to the out. Nope. Uh, reap. Tap you. Hmm. <laughs> then I can make that a copy of that. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? All right. Yeah. I'll have to ask Dufflesaur after this game if he had the removal there. There's a 42-42 trampler. Judging from how they swung there, it looks like they didn't have it. Yeah, I don't think they did. If I was in their shoes, I would have probably just swung out as an admission of defeat if I didn't have the removal, which is why when they didn't block, when they didn't attack, I assumed they had the block and the removal spell to stay alive. Shouldn't have assumed it. It was a bad assumption. Could have been a lethal swing. I guess it uh, still goes to show that could have maybe been a... No removal. God damn it. That could have been a third win. <laughs> God damn it. All right, fair enough. All right, Poseidon, you're up. I think there was a chance that I, I definitely had a fair few top decks that would have kept me in that game regardless, like Rivers Rebukes and Whelming Waves and things like that. Uh, that might have reset enough for the Tempo Swing to come back in my favor, even after that horrific punt, but not much after that. Nissa of Shattered Bows from Poseidon. I'll give this one a shot, I think. Who's after Poseidon? Sounds like you, unless uh, somebody else starts shouting up. If you guys ever want to play Historic Brawl, by all means, let me know in the chat and hopefully I can catch it at me directly so I can actually like see it clearer. I'm just going with uh, Desert Tapped here. Alasaurus Shepherd. Green spells can't be counted. Well, that's annoying. Okay, pass the turn. And give it a go, Max. You're up next. And then it's Bam. After that. Yeah, Alasaurus Shepherd's... Uh, Big meanie energy, to be honest. And this sort of Shadow Bows is like one of the better Zen. Well, actually, probably top. It's definitely top three Zendikar commanders in standard brawl, at least. I don't know what it'll do in uh, historic, but I imagine it's a lot. Uh, I think we're just gonna play this down. It's never getting used. Let's get an ominous seize down. It very well could be elves. I think you're right. Beast Whisperer. Okay. Hmm. So we could get the midnight clock going, or we could start getting a big body on board. I think we go with the clock so that this is an option next turn. Because it may very well be a required piece of tech next turn. I wonder if the D&D set will give us Dark Elves. Ooh. That would be interesting. This uh, hits the field, and we make it a 3-3. We do not. Okay. 
So a two drop to follow up. Yeah, this is going to be pretty decent. Ooh, held back actually. That I was not expecting. Hmm. Perhaps if we take a little bit of a beating just to hard cast this. It's too much cycling going on and I don't like it with this card. It needs to be played in the janky form, which is permanent based. Could be pretty big of a blowout though if they've got like removal for it, of course. But you know what? Live by the sea creature, die by the sea creature, let's go. Wondering which set will give us good artifact creatures. There has to be one coming, or what is the point of the text on Perforos? It's mostly for Commander. They've been pr printing for Commander for a long time now. Carney T. It's pretty good. They've even got a minus with Nissa if they want it as well, and they can put a 5 drop into play. It's going to turn into a creature. I'd agree with, with that play. Alright, well. Make a 6-6. Six, six, undo the past four turns. Seems pretty good. As a solid rebuke. I hate this card with a passion, but you can't play mono blue without it. <laughs> Ulamog's Crusher. Do love that card. I miss Annihilate. I probably shouldn't, but I do miss Annihilate cards. What's the activation on this, by the way? Elves become 5-5 five, five dinos. All right. Pretty important piece of tech. Hmm. So I could play this without the kicker on this. Which doesn't seem that great. We could also just play this. Makes most plays they can make not all that fantastic. Gives us some bonuses as well if they end up playing not Carney T or Beast Whisperer or anything like that. I think we'll go Nezzy. Lil Nezzy. <laughs> Annihilate is just rude. I know, but it feels like one of those... It's always been attached, as far as I'm concerned, to fair creatures. Like, you can cheat them out nice and early, but most of them don't have haste. Except for, you know, if you're talking about modern and then Emrakuling, but... I feel like Emrakul, at the mana cost that she is, is pretty fair as long as you cast her for that, that fair price. <laughs> Hmm. So they might be looking to remove Nezahal here. If they do, they want to be doing it in some way that doesn't necessarily trigger the draw on it, non-creature based, which is kind of impossible. So I can draw and discard my hand if I want to. Oh, that's rough. Oh, that's rough. Oh, God, I hate that. Okay. Well, rip. Casualties of War takes another game. I mean, Agent is technically fair, but I hate it with a burning passion, so we're not going to discuss it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I lose. Casualties of War. The Skydiver, not really making me feel too blown away by its power. This game with some big swings though. Lethal in the air with our shark now. 
Maybe they add Annihilator in the next historic anthology. Yeah, give me old Ulamog. I don't know. I don't think these days you could... Do swing this time, please. Oh, I will. Good game. We get to draw cards. Ooh, that's nice. I don't think we can be 12 here, but... Reclamation Sage on Ominous Seas. Yeah, I think we got him. Sweet. No reach to be spotted here. Let's go straight in. Blocks Charix, blocks Nezahal. We make sure that the rider dies. <laughs> the shepherd, sorry. And we gotta win. Think of the young ones. <laughs> oh, it that betrays is so good. It that betrays with uh, possessed bottle is uh, my mono blue Tron list. <laughs>